Hi there. This is Ray Glasser with another edition of the Cleveland Tech Report. Right now we're sitting in Las Vegas, Nevada in early 1985 and we're going to do an interview show today with two of my friends who have been in home video just about as long as I have. We're talking to two magazine writers, matter of fact, Mr. Mark Wheelage, who writes for Video Review Magazine, plus some others, as well as Mr. Rod Woodcock, who is currently writing for Video Magazine, as well as some others. What we're going to center on, like we always do here on the Tech Report, is, of course, home video. And I'm going to ask these gentlemen, uh, both together, what they think home video has accomplished over the last 10 years, since it is now just about 10 years old. So we're going to start off with Mr. Mark Wheelage, giving his views and impressions on how home video has changed over the course of the last decade. Mark, take it away. For my first impression, I should do Ed Sullivan. but uh, You can even hold the mic. Hey, I can hold the mic. Right. I'm in the union. It's okay. There you go. Well, home video has changed a lot in the 10 years or so that uh, most of us have been involved with it. Uh, I remember the day I bought my uh, first Betamax back in March of 76. In fact, I think I still owe money on that machine, but... Uh, and it was a, a pretty momentous occasion for me, and I know a lot of people around the country are discovering the same things I did a long time ago. And uh, who knows, maybe nine years from now, they'll be just as confused as I am now. But uh, anyway, the, the whole industry has gone into a lot of different uh, kinds of directions that we didn't expect. We never thought there'd be a day when, uh, you know, every uh, ordinary person on the street would own a machine, you know, ma and pa, people walking around, grandmothers, uncles, and so on. You know, everybody, it seems, owns a VCR nowadays. And uh, in a way, that's kind of a, a sad thing because uh, when we were all starting out, it was only the, the crazy techno freaks, the, uh, the gadget nuts who were into video. And now everybody's into it. Maybe that's taken a, a little bit of the sparkle and fun out of video for some people, but we try to hold on to our enthusiasm as much as we can and... Uh, keep it interesting and, uh, you know, try to find fun in it every day. Uh, Rod, do you uh, kind of agree with that? Well, yes, my sentiments are, are similar to those of Mark. Uh, I have not been involved in home video as long as he. I bought my first Betamax in the fall of 77, but in the years that have passed, it's certainly true that we've seen a lot of new products come along and the technology has advanced to the point where uh, as Mark has often said, if we could go back in time and take a, a beta machine or a VHS machine that's on the market today for two or three hundred dollars and show it to, the, to a 1977 or 78 audience, it would certainly blow their minds to think that that kind of product was ever going to be available. Uh, sometimes uh, when I consider that this is the ninth consumer electronics show that I've attended, and I believe it's the 15th for Mark. 14th, but who's counting? 14th, 15th in June. Right. Uh, we sometimes feel that we're getting a little jaded because the first one you attend is literally like a carnival and uh, as you go to subsequent ones you start to realize that what we're really witnessing is just a uh, business after all and uh, you get a little you know jaded and disinterested in some things it's hard to maintain your enthusiasm uh, when there's no new products to be seen but um, that isn't the case for this show uh, we've seen some new exciting products which uh, we'll be reporting on in our respective publications and uh, I think there's still a lot of room for improvement and as Mark has again pointed out now we've just approached the point where home video has reached that threshold where it's now a true mass market product whereas in the early days the VCRs were being purchased by those impetuous uh, innovators, the impulsive innovators, the m market people like to call them, the ones who won't let the price prevent them from going out and buying the latest high technology. And these were the people who bought those first Betamaxes and VHS machines and really made this market what it is today so that we can all afford, you know, to buy $300 Sanyos, Sonys, uh, RCAs, etc. That's, that's right. So many people forget that uh uh, it was just uh, a few years ago that a VCR cost well over a thousand dollars, and uh, right now, you know, anybody can run out and buy one for what, two hundred and fifty, three hundred dollars, and uh, so the video market has matured and, and changed and, and changed in ways that uh, we didn't expect. It's paralleled uh, what it took the audio industry fifteen or twenty years to do, and that is get prices and quality 
uh, to the point where everybody could afford a pretty reasonably good machine, you know, at a, at a decent price. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad to see it happen, but at the same time, I, I kind of feel that sometimes the people who are running the show back in Tokyo forget about the people who were the innovators, you know, the people who want the high-end super deluxe machines with all the bells and whistles. This is something uh, Rod and I have talked about before, the fact that the uh, magazines we write for, Video and Video Review, look at the mass market more than they look at the, uh, the technophiles. So that's one of the things Rod and I have done with our magazine, Video Facts. We've uh, started a publication just for people who are uh, into video as their main hobby. People who, uh, well, like I said in uh, some early uh, articles I did for the magazine, people who have oxide in their blood, real crazed videoholics who might have three or four uh, VCRs and dub tapes, you know, 29 hours a day and uh, have wallfuls of thousands of programs that uh, they never have time to watch because they're too busy recording new ones. So uh, video as a hobby is a real good thing, and uh, I think with more and more people getting into it, we'll see even more video files in the future. Uh, we've been talking we've been talking a lot about a lot of general uh, ideas, just philosophies, and the way the market has gone, and so on. Ray, can you think of any specific uh, technical things like what we were talking about uh, earlier? I've got a couple. One thing I think we should touch on is the idea of American competition. Now, when you and I got our first Betamaxes, let's say almost nine or ten years ago, yeah. we had one format, one speed, monaural sound, and that was it, plus a sixteen ninety five tape, sixteen dollars ninety five cents. Now, about two years after Sony invented Betamax, JBC invented VHS, give or take. Okay, then the war began, and something that we discussed last night was the fact that because of competition, we the consumers have enjoyed the end result. Better machines with more features, cheaper, cheaper machines, so forth and so on. How can you elaborate on that? Um, I guess you could point out that just, just like in World War II, uh, uh, the war got a lot of people jobs. The, everybody who wasn't in the Army was out making munitions and tanks and guns and bullets and so on. So uh, the same is true in a smaller way of consumer electronics. We've got these giant companies, RCA, Zenith, Sony, and Panasonic, and so on, all fighting this little uh, video war, trying to uh, sell the consumer his product, saying his is better than the other guy's. And because they're so competitive, even more competitive than uh, car manufacturers, I think, uh, the, the consumer gets the benefits. He gets the lower prices because of the competition. He gets new innovations like beta hi-fi, super beta, VHS hi-fi, stereo sound, all of these bells and whistles. And uh, each one of these has been one little extra thing to keep the marketplace going and to make things exciting. Uh, Rod and I have seen some uh, pretty interesting uh, things happen at the show. The, the newest thing, which I think uh, Ray will be reporting on or already has reported on, uh, for uh, Carrie's show is uh, Super Beta. Rod and I have been reading rumors of Super Beta, oh, I think at least, what, since uh, six months ago? Mm -hmm. Something like that. They started at the last uh, Consumer Electronics Show in Chicago in June. And uh, as you know, this is a, a new system designed to get more picture quality out of the beta format. Uh, picture quality has always been the primary concern of uh, video files. And that's uh, something we debate, you know, long into the wee hours of the night, you know, which format has got uh, the best picture quality. Well, now I think Beta has won that contest, at, le at least for the short run, with uh, a video cassette format that pretty much challenges anything that can be broadcast on television. So I think uh, for the moment, Beta's ahead in that area. What we can't say is how uh, John Q. Public will take this new innovation. Is this something that's going to make Sony more money and uh, win some more uh, consumers over to the beta camp, or is it going to matter? We don't know yet. So. Uh, well, it, it it just might be, you know, reflecting on the fact that this is 1985 and that the the first Betamax appeared in 1975. I'm not a market analyst, but uh, it seems that there's always some sort of strategy involved in the introduction of products. And it may be that now in in the 84 we've seen 
uh, home video as a business and as a, a hobby and as a, a new real cultural change in the way we watch and appreciate television has been given uh, you know, uh, the seal of approval by mainstream magazines like Time and Newsweek, both of which had large cover stories on home video. So we've really entered that mass market age and, and occasionally when products are available like VCRs for a couple of hundred dollars, you wonder about those people I told you of earlier who went out and you know made this market by spending thousands of dollars to get um, equipment which is now going for fifty or sixty dollars at swap meets. Um, so perhaps this introduction of super beta is an indication that the manufacturers haven't totally given up on the high end, uh, I would call them video connoisseurs, uh, who are true video files and are now looking for some uh, product that will challenge them or a, a counterpoint to the beta hi-fi system which gave us very good quality audio a little more than a uh, year or two years ago and now we have a video equivalent of it and of course um, it's not a system that's going to be exclusive to beta they have it for the time being but as we've already determined by questioning people at the uh, Sony uh, the beta group press conference uh, the system can be applied to VHS and 8 millimeter um, formats as well. So in due time, since this market has benefited greatly from this beta VHS rivalry for the last decade, uh, we'll see the, the same improvements available in competing formats. And that, I think, is going to be good news to all those people who want quality video to go with the quality audio they have. Uh, so. Let's see. Uh, Ray, I'll turn it over to you since he's the guy uh, running the show here. Be that as it may. For the public watching, I do have to say one th thing at this point. Now, you see all three of us on the picture at one time. All three of us, myself and Mark and Rod, believe in the beta format. We think it is better in some ways than VHS. All three of us have at least two or three beta maxes, in most cases more. What I want to ask you guys now, and tying in with this 10-year wrap-up, as it were, of home video, why, in your opinion, has VHS won so many more followers? Hmm. Normally, I'd hand this over to Rod because he's, <laughs> he's written about this same thing in, in uh, Video Magazine several times. Rod was instrumental in putting together two articles on beta versus VHS for Video Magazine. But he and I agree almost 100% down the line exactly what went wrong with uh, beta being the dominant format. I mean, in 1976, Sony had 100% of the home video market. Right now, I think at best they have, what is it, about 14%? 25. No, we're talking about Sony. Oh, just Sony. Just Sony as a company. Okay. I think they have less than 14%, and beta as a format has uh, well under 35 40% at, at best. And the reasons are long and involved, but the bottom line is uh, in the beginning, in 76 and 77, Sony thought they were a big company and uh, could do it all themselves, that they didn't need the help of any other American marketing companies like RCA and, well, not, not Zenith, of course, Zenith did join them, but RCA and the other Central American brands like Magnavox and Sylvania, GE, sure. So I think that was their critical problem. They didn't sign up enough companies to join with them on the beta format. Uh, the other problem was they were so smug in their uh, view of how the format should be designed and what features it should have, that they were uh, very slow to grab on to important technical innovations that VHS developed first, such as longer playing time by slowing the, um, the tape speed down. Uh, what would be some other innovations? Things like programmable VCRs that allow you to tape several different shows. That was an important one. Sure, over a period of uh, a couple of weeks. Picture Search, the biggie. Well, actually, picture Sony, search was originally Sony, Sony, Sony. Sony did develop Picture Search right. first. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, one thing that VHS had before uh, beta, I think, would be full function remote control. Yes. Isn't that right? Now, that's, this is, you know, I've cataloged all these things in articles written in, in Video Magazine and in memorandums sent to the Sony Corporation. Um, yeah, I, I should mention that uh, both Rod and I had corresponded with Sony for a long time. Uh, I've got in my files a letter I sent to Sony, uh, oh, before the summer of 1976, essentially telling them that one hour was not enough, and they would have to very quickly develop a 90-minute tape, if not a two-hour tape. We were, 
we were naive enough to believe at that time that a two-hour recording at the original beta one speed would be possible but of wow. course we were wrong to, to paraphrase a, a famous commercial uh, Sony is a very proud company and will sell no Betamax before its time and really I, I think that's baloney you know, Sony no baloney frequently they would uh, see a, a new trend in the marketing of the competing format take place such as uh, programmability that feature you know to to change channels and record different programs on different channels that feature appeared on uh, a Machusta built RCA machine as early as 1978 and it was two years later before we saw a programmable machine from Sony so they're a difficult company to describe I, I wouldn't say that they haven't innovated a lot of technology because it's true they have they were the ones that developed double azimuth special effects which gives you know the so-called crystal clear special effects on screen um, the list is you know I, I can't think of any right now because it's late at night and I'm a little tired but <laughs> there are there are many things that they thought of first which have been imitated by VHS and uh, other people have written that uh, Sony spends a great deal of their money in research and development coming up with these things, uh, puts them in their products, and then watches other companies uh, stand back and uh, take the same idea and apply it to their products and make more money at it because they haven't had to put the research and development costs into thinking up these ideas and perfecting them in the lab. You know, we, we, can, we can come up with uh, several things that uh, Sony came up with first. We mentioned uh, picture search, that is, watching the images search, right. at very high speed, zipping through a tape. Uh, if you want to watch, uh, say, the evening news in five minutes, you can do that. You may not understand everything that's being said, but uh, that, that's one thing Data you can do. Data hi-fi, uh, the, the, you know, recording the audio uh, signal with the video signal. Uh, this was something, again, that Sony originated, and then VHS was uh, forced to match, which they ultimately did. And I, I think that it's safe to say that there's virtually no technology in helical scan recording that can be uh, invented by one camp that the other camp cannot uh, match, given one limitation, which is that uh, beta has a higher writing speed for those people who are into this technically and will always deliver a better picture quality and uh, better sound quality. No, oh, no. Now, Rod, I should remind you, a good writer should never use two words, and those two words are never and always. So <laughs> you shouldn't say that they can always use this. They, they can use it, but they can't always use it. Well, you so. run rings around me logically, so... Mm. Okay, back, back to Ray here. Thank you. We're running short on time, so I have one we quick are. question. Yes, we only have 20 minutes. I'm just warming up. I know. We have one quick question to kind of wrap this up. I'm going to pass this first to Mark. He's got 90 seconds, then to Rod for 90 seconds. What direction will home video take, in your opinion, in the next 10 years? Straight down the drain. Over <laughs> to Rod. No, uh, <laughs> home, home video is going to be making uh, a lot of money over the next few years, and uh, by God, I hope I get some of it. But um, I think it's going to do extremely well. Uh, we just heard a speech tonight by the president of RCA, Jack Sauter, who predicted, uh, what was it, 15 million machines? Well, I think between 12 and 15 million VCRs will be sold in 1985. Last year, only 9 million machines were sold. Isn't that right? 9 million. Roughly 9 million machines. So we're talking about uh, a 50% increase <laughs> in one year, which is... Uh, pretty good. So I'd, I'd say the industry is going to be doing even better than ever. And uh, even though our hearts belong to beta, I think uh, there are going to be significant gains for both beta and VHS. Well, I'll talk about 8 millimeter um, in my 90 seconds. I think in the next decade, we will see more sophisticated home video products. Beta and VHS are not going to disappear. We will continue to see refinements in both formats, uh, offering um, more features on screen. Programming is something that's coming up. Uh, they haven't exhausted their list of bells and whistles yet. We will also see um, super high fidelity video or super, super VHS, super beta, whatever name they care to give it. And, and 8 millimeter, um, although it seems to be getting off to a sluggish start. This is a system that uh, definitely has potential and uh, it will be uh, coming along from Kodak, Polaroid, Canon, uh, Fisher, Sanyo, and virtually every other company, Sony, Fuji. So we're going to see a lot of new products. Uh, you ain't seen nothing yet. Hey, what a finish. Right on. Okay, this has been Ray Glasser talking to you from Las Vegas, Nevada. 
with two of my personal friends, Mr. Mark Wielage, Mr. Rod Woodcock. We thank both of you. Maybe we'll see you again in 10 more years with another wrap-up of home video. One more thanks I do have to give is to another man that has sat beside me on these tech reports in the past, Mr. Art Volo, who uh, came in from California tonight to work the camera. Good night.